my new album is called Destroyed, and there's also a book called Destroyed as well. And when I go on tour, I try to give myself projects. And the project that I gave myself for the last tour was to write music on tour and to document being on tour. So I ended up writing a lot of music quite late at night, you know, like four o'clock in the morning, uh, by myself in hotel rooms in the middle of these empty cities. And so I guess the two themes of the book and the record are the strangeness of living in hotel rooms and living in airports and living in backstage areas, but also how do you find or create a sense of warmth and comfort for yourself living in these sort of artificial strange environments, which, which might be a metaphor for the human condition, I don't know. But that, so those two things were the ideas behind the book and the record. The combination of these drugs has left her hopeless and lost. When I was in high school, uh, I played in hardcore punk bands and my friends and I only ate at McDonald's and Burger King and we knew some vegans and vegetarians and we thought they were just absurd. So we were, you know, we were 15 years old, 16 years old, and we, we had that perfect American diet of junk food. But there was a little voice in the back of my head that said, you know, if you like animals, you probably shouldn't eat them. And so I tried to ignore that voice for a while. And then when I was 18 years old, I was looking at uh, my cat and I loved my cat. His name was Tucker. And I was looking at Tucker and I simply realized I would do anything to protect Tucker the cat. You know, I love Tucker the cat more than I love any of my friends. I wouldn't eat Tucker the cat, therefore I probably shouldn't eat other animals. And it was that simple thing that led me to be a vegetarian. And then I started reading more about meat production and dairy production and egg production. And the more I found out about dairy production and egg production, it led me to be a vegan. So, yes, for 24 years, I've been a vegan. She wants to count the ways, but she can't count again. For me, the best way of advancing the cause of veganism is to treat people with respect. You know, is to respect their perspective. And, uh, and sometimes that's hard. You know, when people disagree with us, we wanna, we wanna yell at them. And the truth is, when I first became vegetarian and vegan, I was a really angry vegan. You know, I would get in arguments with people about veganism and I would yell at people about veganism. And what I realized is when I yell at someone, they don't listen to me. All they hear is the yelling. They don't, like, even if I had the best arguments in the world, they wouldn't hear me because I was screaming at them. Industrial animal production destroys everything it touches. It destroys the animals, it destroys the workers, it destroys the communities, and it destroys the people who consume the animal products. No one benefits from industrial animal production except for the shareholders of the big corporations. For example, people will come to me and say, well, what's wrong with eggs and dairy? And my answer is factory farming is what's wrong with eggs and dairy. Most people think of chickens on a happy little barnyard, and the truth is chickens are in these big factory farm, industrial agriculture chicken farms, and they're horrifying. You know, 500,000 chickens, 750,000 chickens in the worst conditions you can imagine. So this might sound strange, but I almost think that eggs and dairy are worse than meat. With eggs and dairy, the cows and the chickens are forced to stay alive in suffering that I can't even imagine. The biggest myth of the food industry is, is that there is no suffering in, their, in the production of meat and dairy and eggs. When meat and dairy and eggs, all they are is the result of incredible suffering. So, I mean, most industries don't have to lie to the people they're selling things to. And every aspect of animal production and dairy production and egg production, it's just, it's just all lies. Even from the illustrations they have. You know, you see a truck go by 
and they have it says like Joe's farm and there's like a, a smiling pig and a happy little chicken and then you go to Joe's farm and it's the worst conditions you can possibly imagine with more suffering than should ever exist on this planet. My advice to people who are overwhelmed with animal suffering and animal cruelty and what, what they can do is figure out a way to be a sustainable or have, to have sustained activism. The world has always been filled with injustice and the world has been always, always been filled with wrong. And a lot of us want to push a button and make it stop right now, but we can't. We, we just simply can't. So what we have to figure out how to do is be smart activists and activists who can keep working every day for the rest of our lives. And that means not getting burned out. That means taking vacations. It means doing fun things. It means relaxing every now and then. You know, there's no point in working seven days a week and 365 days a year on animal activism if you can only do that for two years. Hi, I'm Moby for PETA, and I've been a vegan now for 24 years. And what I would encourage you to do, if you can, is basically educate yourself. Figure out where your food comes from, figure out the environmental consequences of where your food comes from, and the health consequences of where your food comes from. Because, unfortunately, the people who produce meat, the people who produce dairy, and the people who produce eggs, they're lying to you. So do what you can, educate yourself, know where your food comes from, and then make the ethical choice. Thank you.